Welcome to the Pace Studio Atlanta, everybody. This is our very first session in our brand new office here at Paste HQ. And I'm thrilled to be joined today by Kevin Kenny of Driving and Crying. Welcome, Kevin. Hello, everybody on the internet. Hey. And at home. So congratulations on uh, the new album, Live the Love Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, this is first Driving and Crying record and, and full album in 10 years. What, um, can you tell me a little bit about Making this album with uh, Aaron Lee Tashjian and yeah, Tim? we we wanted to uh, uh, you know we were thinking about making a new record because we had a we have another great guitar player. We've been become the farm team for great guitar yeah. players. We've had you know uh, we, Aaron Lee Tashjian was one of our guitar players. Sadler Vaden, um, Warner Hodges, you know Matt Carter, a uh, whole bunch of Mir Beerfeller, and uh, we have a new new guy called Lauer Jometz. And uh, we just had, uh, we, we were um, thinking we really wanted to capture him, but we needed uh, to write some songs. So we went to Aaron's house and uh, sat in his living room and came up with some melodies and some ideas and things like that. So it, it was a, an organic process, you know, kind of putting it together. But we really wanted to work with Aaron. Uh, he's been making some really great sounding records and... Um, Chuck Prophet has been making some great records. Uh, my friend Tim Canole in Amsterdam. So there's these guys, that, they're making these really clear, precise, clean records. And you know, I didn't want to just make another Driving a Crying record. So um, I wanted to take advantage of these, these great uh, producers out there. And you know, Aaron produced his last record. And I was really, you know, Karma for Cheap. And uh, I just loved it. So we asked them to re produce us. So uh, I thought I did a great job. So. I did too. Well, um, what are you going to play well, first? The first song today? that I'm going to play is a song from that record. And it kind of came up with, I, was, I wrote on a picnic table down in Florida waiting to do a singer-songwriter showcase. Uh -huh. I just had this guitar and I had this little melody I wrote down. And then I was trying to think of what it should be about. And then I thought, thought about Ian McClagan. I was thinking about South by Southwest. I was over at South by Southwest. I thought, how oh, I never met Ian McClagan. But all my friends played with him. All my friends knew him. And I had an opportunity to meet him. He was walking away from me after playing at the Yard Dog Art Gallery in the rain. And uh, so I wrote a song about a guy that I never met, about wanting to meet the guy I never met. That's what this song's about. Well, the last time that I saw you, you were carrying your gear in the rain down the alley at your dog after playing all day with your friends. The first time that I heard you, it was the faces ooh la la. I bought it at the White Ham Pantry and I played it all night long. I was sitting with a rock and roll road dog He'd been traveling all of his life He'd seen a lot of me come and go So I asked him for some advice He said some people they do one thing Talk about it all of their lives And some people they just keep doing That's what keeps you alive in this rock and roll Well, the last time that I saw you, 
you're carrying your gear in the rain Down the alley at your dog After playing all day with my friends You know some people they do one thing Talk about it all their lives But Ian McClagan kept doing That's what keeps him alive in my rock and roll This so is like my this is like my first show. <laughs> <laughs> it's your first show. Well, I love that uh, you know this is our first session in the new office in Atlanta, and I love that we're starting out with an Atlanta act. And really, you were uh, Driving a Crown was one of the first Atlanta bands I ever really discovered. Like I was a classic rock kid and sort of thought music came from elsewhere. Right. And, you know, just didn't really ever think about it. And and uh, I would love for you to talk a little bit about. The Atlanta music scene back then in the in the eighties and sure. what was going on and uh, you know starting out with driving and crying. Well, you know, I started off uh, like I said. I moved down here. I, I, I we were talking earlier. I moved down here to Atlanta in eighty two, eighty three, and uh, those first two years I was here, you know, I was in a punk rock band in Milwaukee called the Prosecutors, and then I was in a folk duo called the Lonesome Desperados. Uh, and then, um, you know, I did sing, I wrote some folk songs, you know. I wrote one called Gotta Get Out of Here, which is the first song on McDougal Blues, or one of the songs, I I don't know where it is. But, um, so I, uh, I grew up in Milwaukee and Chicago. So, I, you know, I was, I, uh, I loved going to see music. I love live music. I always had, a, my whole life I had a ticket at, to some concert on my bulletin board, I, I saw everybody: Trower, uh, you know, Springsteen, Trower, Southside Johnny, Graham Parker, you know, whatever, everybody, Patty Smith. But um, so there's a great club here called the 688 Club, and I just was like, this place is amazing. And uh, when I I first moved here, Iggy had just played there like for a week or something crazy like that. So uh, you know. Um, Tim was in a really popular band then, like 84, I guess, called the, the Night Porters. And it was Ray Daffico, Andy Brown, Tim Nielsen, and Paul Lenz. And so Tim and Paul eventually uh, recruited me to start a, ba a side project with, and that's kind of what this turned out to be. Um, but, you know, the Atlanta scene back then was like, uh, you know, I looked at look at the Loafing or something today, and uh, her band's in town, and there's... 30 bands playing in town yeah. back then there's like you know maybe four four bands playing and rarely was one of them from out of town yeah so we would just go see bands because they were from california like hey you want to go 688 it's like who's plays like i don't know they're from california it's like okay <laughs> you know so you know i mean they drove all the way from california in a bread truck let's go see them so we saw <laughs> flipper and you know, uh, the residents and all that fun stuff, you know. Yeah, but we had a really good little community here, D Driving and Crying, Uncle Green, 86, the drummer for 86, wound up being in Jesus Lizard. The, uh, there was Think Jet, and then there was, of course, the Night Porters had a different bass player and drummer. Um, uh, the, the satellites were just happening. I used to go see the Indigo Girls at Rick's, uh, which became the St. Charles Deli or something like that. I thought... Uh, you know, so I just loved music. I just embraced it, and I, I would go see as much as I could. Will Rogers uh, was probably the first person I ever tried to play with here. Uh, I remember I, I would go around. To, Tim would drive me around and introduce me to people, uh, and I would do like Subterranean Homesick Blues was my was my jam. Yeah. You know, as I so uh, I play that with everybody. You know, maybe I would think they would they would be impressed. I could remember all the words. And I, I, you know, I can remember most of them. But <laughs> well, everybody thinks of you know Athens during that time, but there was this Athens vibrant scene happening here as well. 
There was a vibrant scene here. It was a more it, Atlanta's been more of a hardy rock yeah. kind of thing, you know. Um, Athens had definitely was a scene was a happening when Athens band played at 68. It was always crowded because the EGA fans would come. So it was like a uh, dream so real was huge. Uh, the pylon had was already almost break, breaking up. Uh, the Mitch Easter projects, th yeah. those were all great. Let's Active, Fetch and Bones. All the, all the bands I was all seeing in high school and college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, when they came, it was always really a special, super sold out night. You yeah. know, uh, I'm trying to think of what my favorite bands from Athens was. I like Dream Surreal, but there was a band. Uh, Tom was the singer. I can't remember. Tom, he was really nice. But anyway, yeah. got it. So you're gonna? Uh, I think you're gonna pull something out, uh, something well, older. I could do. Let me do my. Uh, a de I have a deconstructed version of this. This is uh, first song, side one, first record, 1980. Scar but smarter. Six, scar but smarter. But this is my deconstructed version I did as for my uh, campfire version. It's my campfire version. <laughs> you can hear the words. All, All right. right. We'll see how it works. Okay. I'm out of hope of what she'd be if the I spoke Good times for the undeserved Hard times for the ones who work Poor man, rich man, blind man, dead man Hope for more than they have all planned Cause then they suffer serious blow as the real world cuts the line you hold Nobody said this would be fair We won't you before you win out there there's always a chance to get restarted To a new world, new life scarred But smarter Is it right to wish the poor man rich? Is it right to wish the rich man poor? Hope all that's well is well and fair Wish thy neighbor's life to despair Being so mad that I start crying No payoff for all my trying To do it right, to never fail Wishing for that fairy tale Nobody said this would be fair You won't do before you win out there There's always a chance to get restarted to a new world, new life scarred, but smarter. When my life, it turns all around. Jobs and things to do that I found. I think how foolish I must have looked To think I could be down for good Nobody said it would be fair They want you before you win out there There's always a chance to get restarted To a new world, new life scarred but smarter Nobody said it would be fair But in the end I think it is Karma, justice, whatever you want to call it It's really there, keep looking for it Nobody said it would be fair We warned you before you went out there There's always a chance to get restarted To a new world, new life Scarred but smarter That was fantastic, thank you so much That. So, you know, you guys started out as as a lot of the songs were this real kind of post-punk, um, as you said, singing like Patti Smith, you know, like uh -huh. kind of songs. And and so much of Driving and Crying that everybody knows is, is like Southern rock, um, these ballads. 
I yeah. love hearing all of that in one song in this deconstructed <laughs> way here. Yeah. Well, the, the the funny thing about the, what happened with us being come, somehow we wound up on 96 Rock with this. The, uh, um, but the song's about New York City. Yeah. It's about a kid in New York. Uh, and I just kind of hit that riff. I was, I, was just, I was just making fun of something. That, I don't know. And um, Peter Buck produced the very first version of that. Uh, it's on the Mystery Road double album that we just put out. <laughs> yeah. The demos are really good on that. Yeah. And uh, uh, I guess, I don't know what happened. Uh, what was that, the question? What was the question? I it was a new really question. It was a question. compliment. It was, it was well, thank a comment, you. but yeah, I mean, it was a compliment. Thank you. You I mean. have done. You know, you said you were in a punk band, and then you were in a folk band, and yeah. all of those elements have sort of followed you along the way in your career. Yeah. Well, I've embraced it. I embraced the what I was. You know. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, the sl the the southernese. I want you to feel the southern breezes and the southernese. You know. And blowing around this corner, man, just like the chaos of New York City and this kid sitting on the street. And he was like 15. There was a lot of kids living in New York City at the time who were homeless. And there was a lot of like, even on like Houston Street and like Broadway, mm -hmm. there would be these abandoned kind of buildings and people would live in them. Like there would be a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Like you ever see that movie Kids? There was a lot of kids living like all together and hanging out. So... Um, I just, you know, I was hoping I could just, that kid could, you know, give him a ticket to Atlanta. Ah. At least, at least he'd be homeless in the South. I thought, cause I grew up in the Midwest and when I was broke and homeless and, you know, it's a lot harder to sleep in your car when it's 17 below zero. Yeah. You know, it's a lot easier to sleep in your car when you're parked at the Chattahoochee river and it's like 62 degrees in the morning. It's a lot better. He's like, Hey man, this is. I don't even think this is being homeless. I think it's camping. This is pretty <laughs> awesome. You know? I lived in Arkabutla, Mississippi for a little while and yeah. Just, you know, traveling around, sleeping in my car. So so anyway, I wrote that, that song became a southern uh big southern song, I guess. Yeah. Thanks to ninety six rock. Thanks to ninety six rock. When I, that's all I listened to as a as yeah. a kid. Yeah, yeah, that was my that was my jam. Yeah. So um You've got a, a kind of a special show coming up this Friday. Um, yep. Lots of iconic uh, Georgia musicians on the bill. You've got uh, Drive By Truckers, Michelle Malone, um, Bill Berry's going to be there yep. playing with Dodd and the Councilman. Yep. You got some special guests. How yep. did how did that all come about? Um, well, uh, it's a benefit for these uh, the Fox Foundation, Fox Film Foundation, um, Fox Theater Foundation. I keep forgetting how to pronounce it, but what was that? Revival. It, uh, the event's called Revival, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's... Um, how did it come about? I think it came about... Colonel Bruce's thing was one of the... was a fundraiser for it. So that was my first foray into it. And then I think that they were thinking about doing it every year, and Colonel Bruce was going to be the host. Mm -hmm. Well, Colonel Bruce died at the yeah. show, on yeah. stage, as you all know. So I think when it came to time, they were thinking about an MC. They, you know, uh, my name came up, and so I said I'd love to do it, do an MC, like just MC it and uh, help kind of curate it. And uh, so yeah, we got the truckers and Michelle, and it, it's gonna be kind of a free for all, a little bit of a free for all. And we're not, I'm not sure if the truckers, I'm sure, have some surprises up their sleeves. You know? Yeah. Oh, that sounds exciting. So you got one more song for us. What are we going to hear? Sure, I could do one more song. Um, I'm going to do a song from the new record. And this one is uh, another one from the new record, I think. This one, I like this one. This is a gospel song. I wrote it for my friend Mike Ferris. Do you know Mike Ferris from Screaming Cheetah Wheelies? Um, he's uh, I was So if you're a fan of Mike Ferris, imagine him singing this song. <laughs> But uh, this song is uh, it's uh, it's called Step by Step. All right, I'll do an abbreviated version of it. It's nice to be here.
Gotta take the first step before the second The first one was the hardest one to fake The first one I was on the lookout The second one was uphill all the way I wanna see my soul reflection In a morning cafe window pane I want to see myself tomorrow As someone I don't see Today Step by step I heed your warnings Step by step it's just Step by step I hear you calling Step by step it's just one day at a time Always saw myself as the victim The one that I had to create Always an excuse for my addiction I had to stand up, take my place I want to see the morning colors Ones I avoided for so long I want to see myself tomorrow As someone I don't see Today Step by step I keep calling Step by step it's just Step by step, I heed your warnings. Step by step, it's just. Step by step, did you see me falling? Step by step, it's just. Step by step, it's a new morning. Step by step, it's just. One day at a time Thank you, Kylie. Kevin, thank you so much for coming in here. Um, if you're in Atlanta, you can come Friday night to the Fox Theater, the fabulous Fox Theater. Yeah, it's going to be a special night. Uh, some, you have some more shows coming up. I know Chattanooga. I got some. Uh, Driver Crimes doing Athens. We're doing Chattanooga. I'm doing a show at Eddie's Attic at the end uh, of the month, a solo show. I'm doing a show in uh, Dahlonega at the end of the month. Uh, doing some special stuff uh, special stuff uh, around. But Driver Crying is on tour uh, right now every weekend. And then uh, we go to Europe for three weeks, I think, in October. And then a uh, whole bunch of neat stuff coming. Whole up. bunch of neat we'll stuff. We'll try to bring the band uh, in next time. I, yeah, you, I really dig your studio. We, we got all, room. Oh, they could show all this cool got keyboards and bass amps and all sorts of cool stuff here. So. Ah, thanks. Wow, well, we're your, excited about it. Your, your your first contestant. <laughs> thanks. Did yeah. I, did I win something? You win. <laughs> you win a T-shirt. Did I? <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, and um, nailed it. New album is uh, Live the Love Beautiful live out now. Live the Love Beautiful. Yeah? Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Kevin. Well, Live the Love Beautiful. Thanks, guys. <laughs>